Parental discretion is advised. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza. The podcasters. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 471 on this uh, May 26, 2015. Ready, ready to talk wrestling and all the pay-per-views, no matter how you're paying for it or freebieing it or however that may be. We'll talk about that here in a bit. I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitter's uh, proprietor here on uh, Sorgatron Media Industries. Actually incorporated. That is official uh, part of the podcast network here. SorgatronMedia.com. With me on the line from his uh, uh, new, you know, I, I, I swear you have the new camera, but I think you've made it mostly look like the old camera. <laughs> <laughs> Papa Lunchbox at well, DJ listen, Lunchbox. Listen, we, at can, we can fix that real easy, but okay. um, uh, the it, it is a new camera. Yes, new camera, new microphone, new. New everything. Uh, I've completely rearranged my uh, my underground location. I'm in an entirely different room now. Mm-hmm. So uh, so yeah, we'll we'll fix this whole looking. Oh, you're black like and it. white now. Oh, there you go. Black there you go. white, little noir here. Oh, yeah, well, there are we you, go. Did you, are you in the kitchen now? Sure did you did you just like set Whoa. up your podcast station next to the fridge? Uh, no, I actually I no longer have a bed. Oh. Um, I got rid of my bed because sleep is for dead people. And um, <laughs> but once I once I uh, inevitably get another bed because I'm a human person, um, my podcast station will in fact be next to my refrigerator. The next stop for my desk and my setup is going to be in my kitchen because I have a real small apartment. Sorg. This sounds like a good discussion that's going to happen on uh, uh, the I'll be and the Sorg morning afternoon power hour you can check out at sogatron.com also with us another podcasting proprietor okay <laughs> Look. you did that last okay. week ah <laughs> mad mike from poughkeepsie new york joins us how you doing hi sorg how hi. are you how you doing i'm doing fantastic are you i don't know why what's going on up like there this. yeah that's no no hi how are you all I'm right good. all right also join us from johnstown pa is bobby fj town hi i found dragon ball you found a Dragon Ball. There you go. Unrelated. What the hell? It's just Bobby, under your do desk. not wish for underwear. Uh, mm. Too late. Uh-oh. Okay. Change them. Wish for underwear. Also with us, I don't have it. I messed up his title, but the Riz, the disembodied <laughs> voice of the Riz, joins us as well. Hi, hi, Sorg. I am in the void that is professional wrestling. I cannot wait to talk about this this week. Oh, yeah? Hey, Riz is back. I'm back. <laughs> Yay. Yay. I love when Riz comes back. Even though you can't see my face. Calculon That's right. Here. That's right. Even though <laughs> even though we're not entirely set up for him, it was a surprise. And surprise. I didn't entirely have him prepared. But I'm going to t- punch in some numbers, and we're going to get his face I, piece we here. Like, we're going to get some video. Riz on your faces. Internet. That's right. Uh, in, in the meantime, Let's this go. is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Check us out at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Dot com. Uh, you can uh, per- peruse this and other podcasts that we're doing, including the Indie Mayhem Show. We have a very interesting one uh, this afternoon of a clothing and and music oh. influence uh, on this week's episode. And uh, as far as the Mayhem minutes and uh, the 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 midweek war wrap ups, uh, the mm. raw wrap ups uh, that we're doing over on on Google Plus, you can check out the. Uh, the parties they're doing, the watch parties they're doing, uh, they're looking at some classic, classic matches, and so <laughs> much more. What? Why are you laughing? Oh, well, one one day, yeah, classic's the word, Sorg. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> one time we did watch the Judy Bagwell on a forklift match. So That's right, it's a classic. It's a part classic. of history. Classic. Hey, the, any oh, match that classic. involves a forklift, you know I got my vote. Exactly. You can also check us out at uh, 412-206-WMS0 and that email address Good Good Times Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com Are you still gun shy over there, LB? Yes. (laughs) Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm just going to hold off. And that's that's it. (laughs) There's no joke. I'm just... just... 
Okay, uh, you can also follow us on social media at Mayhem Show on the Twitter, Facebook uh, for Wrestling Mayhem Show, the Facebook group, as well as uh, Google Plus, as well. A little bit of conversation going on around all that kind of stuff, and uh, of course, please uh, big big. Uh, Big uh, support to our friend BasicSickness.com for the intro and outro music for this and the Indie Mayhem show. Please go check out free music, BasicSickness.com. And our Patreon subscribers, of course, the WrestlingRevolution.net or .com, one of the long-time descri- uh, subscribers and Patreon Uh-oh. supporters. And uh, also our good friend, Bo- Kennedy oh, and uh, thank you for that support you can support us to a patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show and get exclusive content right on there for supporting the show including the state of mayhem that we'll be doing very shortly so let's get started uh, the big subject I will toss it over to LB because the big news is Samoa Joe showing his face nearly a week ago here in NXT we have not entirely decompressed from the situation LB I am really curious on your thoughts for some reason well Sorg <laughs> uh, let me let me refer to let's see here did I send this who did I send this to I said I really should have had this ready. I'm sorry. Um, I was I was exchanging messages. It might have been Riz. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, but uh, what I said was, the real champ is here. <laughs> whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa! It's been it's I, I it's been I don't know how long it's been now <laughs> since I've become a fan. Naked ladies? Yes, it was. Shut up! Wow. I've, since I've become a fan of John Cena, and it started out as a bit, and he really did win me over, and I, I genuinely enjoy John Cena now, and the thing he's, things he's doing with the U.S. title, it's fine, whatever. He's been my favorite wrestler. Uh, for the audio listeners, there was air quotes. And now the air quotes are gone because my favorite wrestler has returned. Zack Ryder, right? Last yes, night. Zack Ryder <laughs> is back. No. Great colleague's back. Smitty <laughs> Chase? No, that's you. I don't know who that is, Mike. Uh, Samoa Joe has returned from the hinterlands. From the godless void that is TNA. He is back and he is on my favorite wrestling product, NXT. He's on NXT. He's returning to Ring of Honor. He's doing indie dates again. It's time to tr- drop the charade, folks. I will always have a soft and warm and moist part in my heart for John Cena. But the fact of the matter is. The champ is here. Kevin Owens. Kevin No, no, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Are you, are you sure it's not the great Kali? <laughs> he right. was two time world champion. All right. Well, this was fun, guys, but I got to go. I'll see you later. <laughs> 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 but seriously, oh, NXT, uh, Samojo comes out. I didn't expect it. Maybe I don't um, read the right blogs. I don't know. I didn't, Apparently, I didn't expect it either. No. I got it spoiled right before it happened. I had, I had heard rumors, but I assumed all those rumors were bullshit. Right, yeah. right. I had just read an article before it happened, not 20 minutes before, about, I'm like, I wonder what's happening with Samoa Joe in NXT. And there was some comment from Triple H. Uh, yes, you know, Samoa Joe had been there at the training center, and, and discussions were being had. And Triple H was saying, yeah, I, I think we had some positive talks. Here's hoping. Yeah, he said, I don't think we'll do business, but we mainly just exchange pleasantries. And I believed him. <laughs> hey, internet! The internet's a work! The For internet's the reason, work. My stream is like five minutes behind the actual WWE network. Yeah. And like on Twitter, I, I was looking at Twitter for something else, and all of a sudden I start saying, Samoa Joe! All caps. I'm like, Son <laughs> And it happened. Like, I'm I... a... Oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, I am almost certain that I uh, freaked out my neighbors because I was sitting on my couch and I'm watching this amazing pay-per-view and like I hear the music and I'm like, who the hell is that? I don't recognize that music at all. And then Samoa Joe, Joe comes out and I go, what? <laughs> like, by, like, by the way, can we say how great it is that he's called Samoa Joe? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but I, I told this story in the uh, 
at the midweek war last week. Uh, there was a point in my time watching this that I had to mute myself, take off my headphones, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and throw it across the room mm-hmm. <laughs> because I was that excited. And I knew it was going to happen, too. I'm like, okay, this is the part where Samoa Joe comes out, right? And I'm waiting for it. I'm like, this is the part where Samoa Joe comes out, right? And I keep waiting for it. And all of a sudden, his music hits. And I'm like, that's vaguely familiar to his TNA stuff. Like, vaguely familiar. I'm like, oh, my. And I just ripped it off and threw it. Because I didn't want anybody (laughs) else hearing me scream like a girl. And honestly, uh, for all the crap I've been, we've been giving Samoa Joe for the last two, three years. Longer. longer. Yeah, longer. <laughs> um, he looks better mm-hmm. than he did leaving TNA. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is about that place, but RVD uh, left TNA and looked slightly better than he did. Uh, Samoa Joe, of course, you've seen him now. And now, and, and you see the reverse of that with guys like Anderson, Angle, and the only person that really isn't up there with that is guys is uh, Bobby Lashley, who's just a monster. And um, Jeff Hardy. He's Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy, Hardy, Jeff Hardy's he's only on, he, he, well, he's on meth. Going going to TNA is like becoming the president. Within the first six months, you look like you're 40 years old. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but I'm I'm excited. Like I I never got that excited about wrestling before, and I'm 27 years old. Is this like back in the day? Uh, you know, I think back to the uh, Monday Night Wars, and people would show up on one show or another, or maybe after the wars, and and that guy from WCW finally showed up. I, I it, it made me think about back in the day. Actually, actually, Kevin Owens showing up on Raw made me think back to the day of mm-hmm. when like ECW showed up at the beginning of the alliance angle with WCW. Mm. Like when, when they did the turnaround, like ECW guys showed up and the guys that were already there in WWE turned around and joined them. Like that feeling is what I'm getting from Kevin Owens. So, so, you know, this idea, you know, we, we remember we had our wars and we're going to be our own competition, SmackDown Raw. Uh, whether you, you consider that a, a successful experiment is up for debate, but I feel like, one, we keep talking about NXT as their own build and indie. You have somebody like Samoa Joe that you never thought you'd see in WWE because he was so tied to, uh, to, 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 what do they call it? TNA. TNA. Um, uh, and <laughs> you have Kevin <laughs> Owens who, oh, how Robert, quickly we forget. You have, you had Kevin <laughs> Owens who you never thought you'd see in WWE, let alone, oh, he's on NXT. Oh, he's the champ. Holy crap. He just packaged power bombed, uh, uh, Mr. Cena, you pop know, up power pop bomb. up power bomb. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, they're creating their own waves, excitement mm-hmm. from the Indies, excitement from their own indie. We can say, mm-hmm. uh, they're recreating the field. Like mostly they're recreating their magic mm-hmm. that got us excited about he- it around the turn of the century. Sorry. And you know what? Oh, good. He is still doing indie bookings, by the way. That's amazing. And you think about it, well, and, Rhino, you know, that, Rhino's still doing indie bookings. Yeah, he is. But here's the kick. Here's a, here's my, one of my favorite parts about this whole story. In ROH, the biggest indie company out there, mm-hmm. uh, he is teaming up with AJ Styles. Jeez. And he's facing. Mm hmm. Kazarian yeah. and Daniels. Yeah, I, I wish it's, I could go see it. I I've, wish I could go see it. It's a, it's in my I, city too. I wish I, I could go see it. I just want them to sit down and have a tea party and just <laughs> shit on TNA. It's it's basically a hey look TNA didn't completely kill us match. Yes, it's like we're still relevant and TNA is probably going to die. Uh, I'm I'm going to make a bold later. prediction though. If if this thing with Joe works out where he's doing indie dates and working for NXT. Um, mystery entrant for the Royal Rumble in 2016, AJ Styles. Mm. Okay. Bold prediction. Bold prediction. I, I can absolutely see it. 
you don't even have to really sign him for anything. If you just have him come out for the Rumble, he does his moves, he does the Pele, he gives a Silas class to Cena and doesn't mm. break his neck, you know, whatever. I, I think they'd be perfect. Does John Cena know how to take the move? <laughs> sure. Not, he's a yeah, wrestler. Like he knows what he's you, doing. He Did he ever wrestle Michelle McCool? I can't remember. Wait. <laughs> uh, <what? laughs> oh, that's right. Wow. Oh, I forgot she used that. Oh. Wow. Um, another another NXT thing um, this week that happened that had t- people buzzing um, was the Mountain showing up at the Performance Center and training and people wondering if he si- is going to sign with WWE or if it's if he was working out there. Like, could you NXT, imagine... Tr- NXT trial by combat. Could you imagine him versus Brock Lesnar? Mm. No. Holy no. crap. No. no, I can't. Brock Lesnar would kill him. Brock Lesnar would, would literally break him into pieces. I, Brock Lesnar would actually stick his thumbs in the guy's eyes and, <laughs> and squish pop it out. By the way, spoilers, everybody. Spoilers. I think if they could train him to actually be a wrestler like in NXT, they'd have something there because everybody yeah, knows who he is. You know? And it, I mean, the man lifted a tree that was a thousand year old wives' tale. <laughs> Like it was, it was hearsay that this guy did this back in the day. Like listen, a thousand listen, years ago. I know, they, I know. They did it. They we just team him with Bull Dempsey and get it over. You know, I, I know we blur the lines between reality and not reality with professional wrestling, but Bobby, yeah. I think you need to take a nap. I need to. You need to. I'm serious. Did you not hear Bobby, about this? Did you not hear about down, this? Just lay down, just lay down, Bobby. Like, uh, it's okay, Bobby. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I um, wish people would believe me. <laughs> hot take, hot take from from the chat room on what we're discussing here from Mainstream Matt. ROH's dream tag match is just a recycled TNA main event. I know, and we're happy about it <laughs> it's now. It's going to be yeah. better than any. Um, no, Lucha, see, the problem Lucha was... Underground just sold the shit out of me on Del Rio versus John Morrison. You know <laughs> when it was when it was a T- it? when it was a recycled TNA main event, it was a ring, recycled Ring of Honor re- main event. <laughs> That's true too. And I don't think like TNA Silence. ever. I don't think TNA ever actually booked that specific match. No, like as a straight tag. Oh, team. I'm sure there's somewhere down the ra- down the line those four fought together. Yeah, together. But I don't think. Eh, like, who gives a shit? TNA's dead, match. and Samoa Joe is the kind future. Of. <laughs> Again. Again, Again. Uh, LB, yeah. LB. I think we talked we talk about this briefly, but uh, uh, in that exchange, did you kind of expect and sort of want it to start the way that the uh, Samoa Joe Kurt Angle did back in the day? I don't remember Samoa Joe Kurt Angle. Back <gasps> in the day. That was oh. great. No, sorry. I gave up on TNA a long time ago. That was be- that was before they started waiting. I mean, that was one. No, that was like sorry. the they last good off. thing. They, they they blew that off way too quickly with Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle. Okay. Okay. Because it was a headbutt, and then immediately they had a match like a week or two later. On a pay-per-view, right? Yeah, but still. Like, they could have they could have milked it. I have, that for all I have fond didn't. memories. Okay, whether they could have milked it, whatever the case, I have fond memories of like a two or three pay-per-view series. Didn't they, have a, they had a cage match, of, right? Yeah, it probably ended in a cage match of Samoa Joe. I think Joe. I remember Samoa Joe whipping a chair at Kurt Angle in a cage or something. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It was so long ago. Because it's before we're like, what are you doing, oh, Kurt Angle? And I think Kurt was just coming off his uh, new, newly aggressive ECW tenure. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were still excited about it at, at, at that point. And, uh, and it was and, also when we thought Kurt Angle was mostly dead. Well, there's that too. Mm-hmm. There's that too. Uh, before we started we worrying about his well being so much. So, <laughs> uh, But no, I, I think you look back. I think we had very good things to say about that here on this show. For instance, if you go back to that time frame. So I, I was looking forward to that. I, I, again, I have good memories. Can somebody of like please that. go and check. See if I'm checking talk. right now. All right. WMS historian. I'm Wrestling Mayhem right Show now. historian. Uh, hits the library in the Great Hall. All right. Uh, we have more things to talk about. We're going to talk about Elimination Chamber coming up this week. But in the meantime, please check out PittsburghWrestling.com. We have a lot of stuff going on with the International Wrestling Cartel as well as Renegade Wrestling Alliance. You can get digital download mm-hmm. for the uh, the dance, which included Tommy Dreamer, Dalton Castle, who's showing up in, in Ring of Honor, RJ City, and Justin Labar in a four-way match. Uh, so uh, see how that 
shook out uh, over at PittsburghWrestling.com. Other great things. Uh, we should be editing and posting later this week RWA's last show, including Tracy Smothers. A little slow to get to that here on the timetable, but it's coming up, so please keep an eye out for that as well. As well as the latest releases, including the best of Shima Zion A2 Zima. Uh, it, it is tenure with Prime Wrestling, and the guy known now as DJZ. Uh, some great matches there. I helped put together a little bit of uh so please go check it out pittsburghwrestling.com support indie wrestling support the show so uh next topic we got uh the elimination chamber uh or uh we od on ppv as we get yet another (laughs) pay-per-view for this month so just hook it to my veins. <laughs> the WWE That's Network. That's basically it, right? I mean, we just had TakeOver. We're all recovering and talking about that. There's no room for anything else except for Lucha Underground. I will be catching up on Lucha Underground, by the way. I have vowed this. I don't know where I'm going to start necessarily, but I, I, I'm aiming at January. But other than that. But Elimination Chamber is coming up this week. Uh, of course, first of all, the Tag Team Chamber match. I, I'm not even thinking about who wins this. I'm just considering what's going to happen in this thing, right? Where are you going to fit them all? Where are you going to fit them all? <laughs> we had a 3-on-10 Tag Team match this week, and that looked pretty full. Where are you going to put everybody here? What are they gonna, what's going to be the play for the uh, three members of the New Day? When it's I'm just out, hoping that there's pop-up panels for... Xavier Woods and El Torito. There you go. When, and even Natty. When is, uh, and the question that I've added on this week, when is Bo Dallas going to join the New Day? Yeah, he should. He should mm-hmm. be the Owen Hart. The Owen Hart? Yeah. And the he, nation should always, he should always get the clapping wrong. Don't be racist. <laughs> so that's, that's racist. Don't be racist. I'm sorry. Bobby. <laughs> so, so what do you think? Who's going to get this, or do we just don't care and it's going to be a fun match? I... It's going to be a blast. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's going to be real fun. It, it, could, it could go a lot of different ways. Okay. Because Elimination Chamber can go a lot of different ways. Remember when uh, Santino was in it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> you know, almost won. Um, but if you want me to pick a winner, and it's from the people that are in the match, and not, you know... Harper and Rowan. Yeah, I think would. <laughs> I was just gonna speak. But I think it would probably be, I, New Day sneaking one out of there, with the trapdoor effect. I could see that. Mm-hmm. I'd like you know to what? see Harper and Rowan attack somebody and enter it, but I don't think it's gonna happen. I'm gonna go Dark Horse and say the primetime players. Hmm. I, get I, I, th- I think that. Um, they're going to play up this Titus O'Neil winning father, like celebrity father of the year thing. Okay. I think they're really going to play that up, especially with Father's Day right around the corner. They have him be a tag team champion at that time. I think it works. And uh, with Darren Young, you know. Making moves, making moves, making million dollar moves. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I think New Day's going to squeak one out. I agree. Squeak it out. That's what they've been doing for a while, and it's worked so far. Squeak. So. Mm-hmm. They're having too much fun with it, and they're so kind of hated even amongst the tag teams. So uh, yeah, no, I think I think they have a lot of legs on this one, and I'm hoping they don't just kind of move on from it. Even if it's even six. if primetime players get it, I hope New Day is involved for a good while. And, mm-hmm. But I don't want. I, I'm hoping you know it doesn't need to fade off. Uh, you don't need to fade off Kid and Cesaro. Is the thing yeah. too, and I'm worried that's what's happening. We're like, okay, what's the next thing? Okay, what's the next thing? You're not building a division at that point. You just you're you're you're, build, you're building an instance of a division and then kind of throwing it away. Only two may enter <laughs> at a time. Nobody's picking the Ascension. No. no. <laughs> Bobby. Oh, Bobby, you and your jokes. Uh, no. I'll pick the Ascension. Yes. Um, is well, mainstream Matt saying WWE doesn't care about outside accolades or publicity. See Adam Rose. Is this uh, discussing the the advertising thing? No, it's talking about the, the uh, ESPN yeah, thing. The, I'm sorry, everybody talked. The ESPN thing. We all oh, said the same yeah, thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I still have to watch that. Exact same thing, sorry. I still have to, yeah, but it was off kilter enough that nobody. E sixty sixty sixty. Anyways, uh, back to the other elimination chamber. I see title. I think there's a lot of fun things happening around this. Mm-hmm. 
We all know who's going to win. Our truth Rusev? Wait, no, I think it's going to be Sheamus. No, no I, no, I don't think it's so. going to be Sheamus. Nope, I'd say Rusev. Anytime you have a multi-man match, you always say it's going to be Sheamus. <laughs> <laughs> now, especially with his new haircut. <laughs> Who has more of a chance in that match, Barrett or R Truth? Barrett. Barrett. I'd, I'd Barrett. honestly say R Truth. R Truth. Yeah. <laughs> Barrett's no, the king. King. I know. I know. It is. It, 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 it's probably a joke coming from you, but anybody can win any any of this. this yeah. Is, we this, about this. This, this is, is like R Truth's time. Royal Rumble. It is. This is the new Royal Rumble, and it's free, by the way. All the guys are qualified. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're all reputable champions. I mean, our truth was a NWA World Heavyweight Champion at one point. Gross. <laughs> I think Gross. Bacon's gonna sneak out as the champ again through a trapdoor. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to non-chamber matches, no, of course. No the, one thinks Ryback is gonna win. The huh? uh, title no. match between uh, uh, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. <sighs> Rollins uh. has that belt through SummerSlam at least. I, think yeah, so. I wonder if Kane interferes in this match, and then Roman interferes in this match, and then blah, 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 blah Seth Rollins wins. It's not the feature of the night. The feature of the night is obviously going to be Kevin Owens, John Cena. What happens? Oh, I thought you were, I thought you were going to say Neville and Bo Dallas. My bad. I want Kevin Owens to win. but That's going to be the show stealer, but I still think Owens and, and Cena is like the big time, and what are they going to do with this? Yeah. I, I, I genuinely believe that this is the final overture in John Cena's Let's Put Over NXT masterpiece, <laughs> and Kevin Owens is going to beat him. It's not you for think? the title, so... Not yet. I I want Kevin Owens to hit him with an attitude adjustment. What do you mean, not okay. yet? There is no not yet. It's no, this no, fucking listen, Sunday. Listen. He, remember how he got the title match for NXT? He walked out and said, I only fight for... Big title, big prize only fighter for titles. Mm -hmm. But but his John already said he doesn't want the title. Yeah, his whole argument has been that the NXT title matters more than the U.S. title, which you know is Why an not have both? point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, because then you're going to end up with John Cena as the NXT champion, and nobody wants that. Nope. No. no. I would like to see that just to see the faces that Eamon would make. <laughs> <laughs> and Mad Mike and everybody else. No, I, actually, John Cena versus the Demon Balor would be great. <laughs> yeah. 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 Although, uh, then you'll see how, how small Finn Balor actually is. And... <laughs> that is Take that back, Zork. That's the unfortunate part. Hey, sorry, guys. <laughs> everybody in NXT right now is small. <clears throat> Remember, Except for the Mountain. Except for the Mountain. Corbin. Aaron Corbin is the monster in NXT, and yes. that's not safe. Yes, yes, and, and he's gonna move up, and we're like, "Who's this guy? Why, why do we? Why do we care about this guy?" You know, um, we say that now. talking about Baron Corbin. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, his yeah. torso is sad. <laughs> sad torso. <laughs> also, he's we got a three-way '90s kid. <laughs> three-way triple threat match. Uh, of course, Nikki Bella, Paige, and Naomi. I want Naomi have... to win. Yeah, why aren't they having a Divas Chamber match? I know, right? Because the Divas Chamber match. That was just murder, murder. Not half of the Divas. Enough good Divas. They're all down oh, in shit. NXT. They're all down in NXT. All you have to do is bring up one. They and have the problem with letting the up. Divas get too violent. Yeah, yeah, I guess. But you you could have, like, Paige, Bree, Nikki, Naomi, Tamina, and bring up Charlotte. That's all you need. That'd be a great match. Mm-hmm. I, I do. I I've wanted to see a divas elimination chamber for the longest time. You are the only. Well, one. since they already experimented with two <laughs> two new uh, uh, applications of the elimination chamber, maybe next year, or maybe we'll just have we'll just have another yeah. elimination chamber at the end of September when that's a free month as well, Mike. Because well, that's what no, we they'll, do. They'll just and, wait until the next Inspire pay per view, and, and that'll be right in the middle chamber. of San Antonio while there's Inspire going on that month as well. <laughs> And Sorg, Sorg, they're going to have another free month before September. Let's be yeah, That's true, too. June. Probably <laughs> July. It's probably July. Yeah. You're probably anyway, going to have one Naomi. every other month. I would like to see Naomi yeah, win. Naomi, I want yeah. to see Naomi, Naomi win. She deserves it. She's been yeah, like Naomi, battling for like years. You know? Yeah, Naomi should really get the belt. Naomi should win it. Paige is probably going to win it, and I'll be fine with that. 
not not mad, not mad. Like Nikki is just kind of held on to the belt for so long. She's in some great matches, but nothing she's memorable. Not that bad. I mean, no, she is if Nikki keeps it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think is, it's going to be a good match regardless. This is the pay, one of the weirdest pay per views that we had because all we've said during this time is. I don't care who wins. It's gonna be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's a free pay per view. Like it's a bonus pay per view. And also, and, uh, uh, Neville taking on Bo Dallas, as we mentioned. Everyone wins. I wanna. I would like to say something briefly about Neville. Um, I've been watching uh, uh, wrestling with uh, my D and D group essentially because on Sundays I go and I play in Cranberry with my uh, with my friends. Mm-hmm. And I can't make it all the way down to the South Hills in time for the pay-per-view, so we end up watching it up there. And uh, Neville has been dubbed the British Jumping Elf. <laughs> and that's his new name. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that's the show title. Oh, it's boy. perfect and apt. British oh, Jumping boy. Elf. All right. Uh, that's Elimination Chamber. We'll be watching as we are any other pay-per-view, but only on the WWE Network, apparently. So uh, let us know what your thoughts on what's coming up with the uh, WWE Elimination Chamber. What are your picks? What are you expecting out of the show? And uh, we'll be right here talking about it most likely next Tuesday here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. So, guys, check out our friends SliceOnBroadway.com. They're supporting the show. We had some guests in here, and we get to feed them uh, You know, just a little bit, something they don't have to worry about, so they can join us in here for an awesome cast or any of the other shows that we do here on Tuesday nights at the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm sorry, live.sogatronmedia.com. Uh, you can join us about the entire evening as long as our stream keeps up. Um, so please check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. Facebook, Google, no, Facebook, yeah, you can Google them. Uh, PGH underscore Slice on Twitter, uh, as well as Instagram. And they're right here along the train line in Beachview in the South Hills of Pittsburgh or Carnegie PA down there on, on Main Street. You can check them out there too. Let them know. You heard about them on the Wrestling Mayhem show. So with that, we're going to come back with the big question. We had some responses from last week's big question about who you would introduce. uh, How would you introduce somebody to wrestling that hasn't checked it out before? And we'll be back with that right after this. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is DJ Lunchbox talking to you about the Wrestling Mayhem show. I have a simple question for you. You know those beds that are like, uh, you know, sometimes you get them in the hospital, sometimes you get them at home, they're like hospital beds, and you can um, you can hold down a button and just kind of fold them up, you know what I mean? Like the top goes, mm-hmm, so you can watch TV and the bottom goes, mm-hmm, so your legs feel good, but you don't stop at the comfort level, you just keep going until you're like a V-shape. That's what the Wrestling Mayhem show is like. You listen to that, and it just kind of puts you in this V-shape, but spiritually, it makes you feel real good, like like you know this is weird and different and you're not used to it but it somehow feels right check it out at wrestlingmayhemshow.com at your earliest convenience and we're back it's the wrestling mayhem show and it's time for the biggest of big questions he's gonna lay the biggest of them all on us tonight it's dj lunchbox that's not true that's too much build up but thank you uh (laughs) i told you i'm gonna make it great (laughs) like dominoes so uh, this week we're talking about uh, Samoa Joe coming into NXT and how uh, you know he was in Ring of Honor and he was in TNA and it got me thinking about um, wrestlers from from other locations and other promotions and other styles coming into WWE. NXT has been a great example of this. Um, we've had all these different styles coming in and uh, meshing in a uh, in a wonderful fashion. So here is my question. Uh, it's just a it's just a, a fun little fun little thought experiment, if you will. Um, and that is if you could pluck any wrestler from any era and have them compete today, they are in their prime, top of their game, and they are going to compete in NXT and WWE, who would it be? The only caveat is that this person, their style has to be able to mesh well. With the current style, hmm. Hmm. I got to it. Kick thing, to kick things off, I'm sorry. Go Sorg. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna have you do it. Um, uh, I I'm going to pick uh, the Dynamite Kid. I feel like he hmm. would thrive hmm. in the current environment. I think it would be a lot of fun to see him uh, match up against a lot of the current wrestlers, and uh, he would rise to the occasion. So that's my choice, Sorg. 
Uh, I would go Mr. Perfect. Ooh. Oh, that's a good one. Great yeah, technician, good one. very good, very energetic. Um, and I think he would adapt. I think he would he would mesh pretty well with things. Uh, yeah, Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning, I think he would make an impact. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Who's mm. next? I, I I'm I'm gonna go a little bit out of the norm, and I will say delirious. Ooh. Ooh. That's, that's Ooh. Cool. Yeah. I could you imagine like delirious interrupting an authority promo in the beginning of the show? Wouldn't that be the best thing in the world? <laughs> I'm into amazing. that. It would be amazing. All right, uh, Riz, you have one. I, I have two that I'm debating, uh, but I'm gonna go with my, my uh, first instinct and say, Owen Hart. Hmm. That was my second guess. Yeah, he was gonna be. He's gonna be. He was. If he was in NXT today, he'd probably be amazing at it. Um, just his style, his the, the way he gets a hold of a crowd is just amazing. Uh, and I, 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 won't, I don't want to take anybody else's, so I, I, I'm going to save my other, other guess, my other answer for this one. But go ahead. Bo. You didn't go. Bobby. I didn't go. Bobby. Uh, I would go with Scott Hall, but as Razor Ramon. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you not as Razor Scott Hall. Not, not as I would bring Razor but... Ramon back. Yes, I I think he would work in NXT. That kind of character, um, his style of wrestling. You know, I mean, they said he might be a trainer there, so um, why not? You know, I mean, um, well, maybe, yeah. Until that thing happened. I think, I think mm -hmm. that thing. Probably... Yeah, yeah, he might have come back, but I mean, he was going to be if <laughs> if he's not. <laughs> so yeah, as Razor Ramon. <laughs> awesome. that, is a, that is a really good question though like I'm, I'm trying to think of all the good wrestlers and i'm like thinking of everybody in I the was... attitude era who'd probably do a lot better now than in the attitude era mm -hmm. i was thinking of wrestlers who who were good enough to be champion but never were mantar back in the day mantar. yes mantar <laughs> man, <laughs> man mountain rock <laughs> um i would love to see in 2015, in NXT, Techno Team 2000. That is uh, Blake and Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually... Okay. Yep, Bobby yep, nailed yep. it. Bobby, Bobby. Points. Bobby nailed it. Yep. 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 You yep. nailed on Ed. Yeah. Now with seizures. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Japanese fighting seizure wrestlers. <laughs> See, that was a good question. I think that I hyped that really up appropriately question. there, LB. Thanks, guys. So uh, you can tell us uh, who would you like to see plucked from their own time period that if, uh, it, that you think would be able to do a run and keep up with NXT today. Let us know on the Twitters. Uh, hashtag WMS Big Question and follow us at Mayhem Show so we can see it. And you have a chance this week. We're going to look at uh, how about Best of AJ Styles Volume 2 in the IWC, including a lot of big names that they, that they faced. Uh, uh, guys like Christopher Daniels are certainly on there. And uh, your Matt Hardy's, your Christian Cage's, all kinds of fun stuff on there. Uh, and uh, Sorg. Find Riz twice. Sorg, from the chat room, Mainstream Matt says, this may sound too recent, but Chris Jericho. I can see it. No, that's good. And he, he could have a feud with Solomon Crow. And we're saying we're saying like I want the Lionheart Chris Jericho in there, right? Mm -hmm. Like like is that where we're we're like do we want them in their prime or as they were starting out? In their prime. In their prime. So that's like uh, why two J save us? That's like a top head ponytail <laughs> Chris Jericho. Well, you could argue when Jericho's prime is though, because I thought he was doing his best stuff when yeah. he was like the heel suited Jericho. Yeah, suit like, Jericho is my like, favorite Jericho. I, I don't think yeah. that's his, his general prime though. Like like that's his that's his past prime. That's his, his entire like, career. Like, yeah, Shawn Michaels <laughs> Shawn Michaels prime was in the nineties. But it's not like he didn't do amazing in the 2000s, you know? Like, well, when, when prime... would you say Shawn Michaels' prime was? Because I'd say it's after he came back. I think his 
stuff that I enjoy is then, but I think his prime, his, prime was when he his was general injured. ideal it, prime was, was uh, the, the, like, 90, 94 to 96 when mm-hmm. he was on top, when he was doing tremendous stuff with Brett. I know it doesn't feel like it because WWF wasn't on top at the time, but I think that's when he was the utmost greatest performer overall yeah no it's not really? the it's not and it's definitely it's certainly not i'm not saying yeah. that it's i think <clears throat> definitely his best matches came after he came back but i don't mm-hmm. get i consider like a secondary prime I, you know what i mean i okay. honestly think uh, the way you're talking about sorg uh he was on the upswing in those years i guess so and then when he left i believe that was his prime when right. he, he left in his prime right and then yeah. he came back, and he, even though it was all the way up top, he was still on like some decline, even though it was very shallow. It was a very shallow decline. He was still declining from that prime. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Could I change my answer? <laughs> no, Bobby. <laughs> no, it's locked Bobby. in. Chris no. Jericho, but as the lead singer of Fosse. <laughs> <laughs> How about Brian Danielson? You know, back before he did yeah. that. Like yeah, skittles. yeah. Before you got injured every week, yeah. Before you yeah. got, before you didn't exactly. have skittles for a vertebrae. You would have had a longer <laughs> WWE, uh, uh, you know, run there. So skittles and five hour energy. Anyway, so we we had last week's question was, uh, what would you do to uh, get people into wrestling? What would you show them? We had a little bit of discussion about that on last week's show. You can go check that out. Uh, so uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show four seventy. But we did get an email, uh, one from uh, Gabriel. Yes. Okay, he says in email, how would I get people interested in wrestling? How would I get people interested in wrestling? He, did I piece that twice? Uh, I think uh, I think friends... Uh, I think I have friends on the person. It depends on the person. Uh, my fiance uh, got into Total Divas, and then I branched off to her watching every Tyson Kidd, John Cena, and Daniel Bryan match, Then, which then uh, branched off to her watching other people. It's been a pleasant domino effect. I know domino is not with WWE anymore. I don't know where he's getting this information. Uh, But anyways, (laughs) Lucha Underground has a pretty cool soap opera feel to it where you get really invested into the storyline. My friend's parents started watching Lucha Underground because I told them about its uh, soap opera feel. If I had to show people certain matches to get them interested, uh, which I have with many friends, I would choose Jericho and Andy Guerrero matches. Most recently, I got four friends into wrestling by taking them all to Raw on Hogan's birthday that last year. They're all hooked. Gabriel, <laughs> a.k.a. Rip City Rising, out. So there you go. Um, cool. I, think, I, 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 I agree with side that. Note here. What's that, Riz? Can I get a side note? What's that? I like how all of our emailers have their own nicknames now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, we got we got Gabriel and uh, I already forgot what his name was, and we have uh, Pierre <laughs> Kelly. And, yeah, we have Mr. Techwood Drive, Pierre mm-hmm. Kelly. Uh, it, it's just it's just an uproar now. We have all these nicknames now that we have to keep keep track of. Yeah, I wonder where they would get the idea to have nicknames on a wrestling show, Riz. That's his last Riz, name. That's, kind my, of, that's, that's part of my last name. It's an offshoot of it. I don't know who who. Where do you think Mad they came from, Mike. Sorg? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> or Lunchbox, if that is your real name? It's that, not. That, that, <laughs> not. Lol. It's, it's really, not. Lol. My my friend is named Lunchbox. <laughs> That's his proper name, Mister Box. Anyways, uh, uh, Gabriel here is going to get a copy of CM Punk uh, Best of IWC Volume 1. So please uh, uh, go participate. You can get uh, AJ Styles Volume 2 for this week's prize. Hashtag WMS Big Question. So, AA uh, uh, ProWrestlingTees.com. Please support some indie wrestling. But uh, start with us. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS, for instance. And uh, it's some great designs there by Alex Carr. It's a good time at WrestlingMamShow.com. The good property times. of WMS. Uh, we get in there. Some, some great, I get it. Was that right? great shirts. Yeah. I, I, saw, I saw a great shirt this week. That was the Eddie Guerrero uh, sitting on the ropes with the legs up. 
<laughs> some classic Eddie Guerrero. Uh, but please go check out friends of the show like DJ Zima Ion from TNA and, uh, and a whole bunch of indie guys in there. Uh, so uh, uh, support indie wrestling. Support the show. ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. So let's get into, speaking of, blah, 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 uh, we had uh, uh, some information happening with Impact. And... Uh, <laughs> So, so this is unsubstantiated. Uh, the news coming from, I believe, Bill After in the Wrestling Observer, if I have all that right. Uh, nope. I, no, it's not After. It's, it's uh, Meltzer. 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 Oh. Oh, okay. Thank you. Good, because yeah. I like Bill. He's a, he's a gentleman and a scholar. And, uh, okay, I met him once, and he was really nice to me. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> no, but, but good, good. I, 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 I'm sorry. In my head, I confuse those for some, for some reason. Um, mm. I mean, there, there are two old school names of, of the, the, uh, the old school dirt sheets and magazines, right? So, They're pretty the, reputable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, so that's the, they, they both kind of interchange in my head for that reason. I, I, apologies to Bill. I, I don't yeah. know, Pastor. So, you know, um, and, and people apparently I think people have some very varying opinions of Meltzer as it is as well, if I'm not mistaken. So but anyways, Mike, you are our resident impact watcher, sometimes impact death watcher. We're yes. still figuring out whether there's a death question mark going on here. Mike, what is the situation? What is the information that we've heard? And why is there a question mark by it? Uh, well, sh- uh, can we just start calling Impact Schrodinger's Ring? Because I'm not sure if they're canceled or if they're not canceled, and I don't feel like opening the box to see. Um, the rumor is that right before the Impact announced they were changing their time slot to Wednesdays, uh, Destination America pre-canceled their show. <laughs> um, supposedly when the new TV season starts in September... Impact is not going to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. Um, now, we no one's really heard from Destination America on the topic. TNA has been all over the place saying they're going to sue people and whatnot, and no one really cares about what they're saying because they're, we're not actually saying that TNA is done as a company. They just may not have television. They've done this before. Yes, with Spike TV like, Spike- and... Yeah, they and they're no longer on Spike TV. So, and and they've even had like delays of hey, we're gonna move our thing over for a year, or just wait it out for an, at the end of the year. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna have a new new deal coming out soon. It'll be fine. And they move, but mm-hmm. other than that, they bitch about it. That's the one thing I don't get. Just say the report is wrong and have Destination America say the report is wrong if the report was wrong. Somebody's not telling somebody something. Well, I, apparently, um, and I would talk about this week's impact, but I, was, would also, I, would also just, I, I would just recommend – that you go back in the WMS archives and you find what we had to say about Slammiversary 2014 because that's what was on this week for reasons. Uh, but, but that's uh, sometimes, and I think when we, we talk about wrestling, we expect, oh, there's a new episode every week. And unfortunately, I think when you look at probably execs from Impact, I think Spike did this sometimes over the holidays where they would do a best of or something like that. Because uh, they're like, well, we're not going to waste new content on this on the holiday weekend. We can't compete with that. We're Destination America. It doesn't matter what we put on. So let's not waste a show that costs us X amount of money to produce on that weekend that we know we're going to get a hit. So okay. I'm and not I, I'm, I'm, I'm not that, really, so. you know, I, I, I think that's fine. I think that's I'm, fine. I'm with you on that. But if it's two weeks before you're going to have a time change, mm-hmm. you should probably be airing new content that really plays up that, hey, we're going to have a time change. Well, I, I, and and also, did you. And apparently there was new impact content that aired overseas. Really? Yes. That's yes. weird. Over, yeah. Overseas got like new matches and stuff like that. And apparently they got a debut of the Pope D'Angelo De Niro on commentary. They don't have oh. a Memorial Day. 
Oh, on the same weekend. That's true too. But still, that that, that, that okay, that? that's weird. That, that it's very confusing. I'm with you. That is confusing. That 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 shows. Ew. I don't know. I don't know what that shows. It shows a complete lack of company organization, because Kurt Angle, until maybe about a day before Impact aired, didn't even know that they were replaying Slammiversary instead of showing a new Impact. Right. Because he was he was telling people to watch for his I Quit match with Eric Young, mm. and we were like, no. Wow. And that and happening. that is I don't think that's a disconnect with Impact in general. I think it's a, it's a disconnect between them and Destination America. Which mm-hmm. we you know we complained and saw the disconnect between Spike and, and TNA to see this happen on this level they're not in a better place it's a smaller they're level. in a worse place Destination America has actually been spoiling shows yeah yeah like like legitimately showing the ends of title matches before they occur mm-hmm. in promos like. And, and that's an exec somewhere not understanding pro wrestling. They're like, oh, it's just like any other show. And you show, oh, we're going to lead up to this point in, in this show. And it's a cliffhanger. And But we really only saw it on the commercial anyways. you know. But you get your context by watching the entire thing. It doesn't work for wrestling that way. Riz? Uh, I, again, I'm going to bring up the point of Destination America needs to say something. Mm-hmm. If, if they don't know what's going on, say we don't have an idea of what's going on or just say yes or no, or I don't know. That's it. That's it. And I think that's where most of the things are happening where Meltzer's getting sued for it. And that's air quotes for the audio listeners uh, sued for his, uh, for what he heard. Uh, But he has sources that tell him things. It's not like he's just blurting out information he has some guy saying, hey, this nation America is canceling this in September. Maybe. Mm-hmm. But it, it um, yes. Yeah. So if it's really true that that TNA Impact or Impact Wrestling I call is only, is only going to be that. until September, I may have to watch it till the end. No. I, I, was, I, t- I told everyone I was going to say the Slammiversary. Hey, Slammiversary <laughs> happened. Good job. <laughs> you made it. You made no, it. No, but if it's only going to be on a couple months after that, I want to see if they actually, like, if they do a season finale or something. Or where, series like, finale. A series finale where, like, there's a zombie <sighs> outbreak. Or They're going to tie like up all the loose I heard, ends. I heard on a different podcast I listened to that they want just a zombie outbreak on TNA. Where do they just get back on the bus? Eric Young. <laughs> That's good. Remember at the beginning of yeah, the, they, their, the they, they get back on yeah. both of their party buses and just drive away. I was gonna say Eric Young leaves a loser leaves town match and then goes to the roof and becomes a dragon and flies either off. That, <laughs> either that or like the last the last shot of impact is just Jeff Jarrett lying in a bed and he wakes up next to Karen Jarrett and he says, Oh, phew. That was all a dream. Damn, Stay tuned for Global Force Wrestling. You know what's funny? They did that when uh, Attack of the Show went off the air with the original screensavers. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> they did That's that. Awesome. They, they got them back and they did that. Um, <laughs> uh, look it up. Look it up if, if you can. Um, but anyways, it's like they blew the rest of the budget for Attack of the Show I, I on that G4. sequence. Uh, you know, I, 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 yeah, I think if nothing else, we got to start thinking towards the future here. Let's say if this is true. Uh, and as far as them, apparently TNA is attempting to sue anybody uh, for defamation. I, I think they're going after like Meltzer, right? The people that that, that yeah. propagated this in yeah. the first place. If you're re-reporting it, I don't think you have a lot to worry about. And we're talking about it uh, here on this show freely because this so is we, news. We, we can't get sued, right? So we're, I'm pretty sure we can't get. I don't know. We have a lot of law we're stuff. Un, it. We're saying unsubstantiated rumors. So yeah, we are saying we're, we're clarifying that we do not know or do we claim this is happening. Mm-hmm. And we uh, we are a podcast that is based on the idea of wild speculation about a fake sport. You, you guys, you guys, all this being said about impact, um, I have a medium question for the rest of you. Hmm. That's a nah, different. I, I, I got, was I on got NBC. Did there. No, I used to be on yeah, NBC. <laughs> because I I've been giving this a lot of thought, mm-hmm. and I I will give my answer first to it, so as to give you guys time to think. If you could take one wrestler from 
the possibly maybe going out of business Impact Wrestling or at least going off TV and booked them in an angle with one NXT superstar, who would this be? Mine, I would have a feud between Joseph Park and Finn Balor. Wait, hmm. Joseph Park? Yes, Joseph Park. Because I would have a several-month feud where they push each other into their evolved forms, and you eventually get Abyss versus the Demon. Okay, okay. I think I think it would be super fun. I think Finn Balor could play off the Joseph Park character, and he could accidentally get him to bleed or something, and you could see a hint of Abyss, and they could play it up like... Balor can say, you have more to give me, something like that. I think it would be super fun. Um, kind of as a side, uh, yeah. but, you know, playing favorites here, of course. But uh, how about Tyler Breeze taking on or maybe even tag teaming with DJZ? Ooh. Oh, I like that, Sorg. Do you I like, like a, you do, do you like um, one-on-one or do you like the team? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the answer to both, because I can see DJZ being – the hype man for Tyler Breeze's runway models. Mm. <laughs> you guys won't like uh, my answer. There's... Oh, go ahead. Uh, oh, oh, no, go ahead, Riz. Oh, go ahead, Bobby. Okay. Um, Mr. Kennedy. And oh, no. back uh, as Mr. Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. Back as Mr. Kennedy. Kennedy. Versus Hornswoggle. <laughs> God for the damn right, it, Bobby. The right to be Mr. McMahon's nope. legitimate son. No, nope, wow. no, nope. I give him that one. He gets that one. <laughs> all Easy. right, all, all right. right. If we can bring back May Young and Mark Henry's hand son, yeah. I guess we can bring back that angle too. For for me, it would probably be uh, oh, how about Sonata versus Adea. Hmm. Uh, Sonata is no longer with TNA. Yeah, they were. Uh, <laughs> Or in this fantasy Gray world, Luna, he, she, he he's still there. Okay. Gray Luna versus versus Kalisto, uh, Hideo. Okay. There. <laughs> how about, how about can I can I modify one a little bit? Can we? And uh, um, Matt Matt from the chat room is saying, "Give me Bobby Roo, Australian bounty hunter." <laughs> Which also, I, I don't know if you saw that other one in there, Mike. He also says, as we're talking about the supposed death, the CEO of Discovery Networks is the highest paid media CEO out there. He answers to no one. TNA is a bug, and he is the boot. <laughs> so oh, is that an answer yet? LB, you've been pontificating over there. I've watched the expressions See? as we've talked about this. Uh, I can't think of anybody in TNA. <laughs> How about EC3? What would you do with EC3? I, actually, actually, your dream thing kind of just happened. Yeah, yeah it kind of did. Yeah, yeah, actually, that's, that's a good done. point. That's it. It's <laughs> done. Samoa Joe, Joe and yeah. anyone. Done. Yeah, Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Actually. Yeah. All right. Side note, how about uh, Ultimate X Max, Finn Balor, uh, Kevin Owens, and uh, I don't know, uh, Zane and uh, Tommy? Let's do this. Nice. Well, okay. yeah, of course, that'd be fun. Swap any of those out for Neville. I'm seeing uh, a lot of head nods. There. I, would ju- I would just send EC3 to the main roster. That's true. That, yeah, have please. Skip, have please skip NXT. I, I think he will be on the WWE main roster. I think they realized their mistake of letting him go. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes WWE does let people go. Um, from from con- like, uh, Jim Ross has mentioned this several times. A lot of, we're going to let you go right now. Go work the indies. Go figure out who the hell you are. Mm-hmm. The problem is they couldn't. they didn't have an NXT to send people to mm-hmm. when they had this. Mm-hmm. and it's go away we're going to stop paying you figure it out maybe you'll come back and and some have and so and, and so that has worked out for a few people not everybody of course but it's not a we like you we think you can do something you're not going to be around here with training wheels so go do it somewhere else come back when you have something for us um and i i think yeah i think it's uh, it, so I, I think there is one 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 few that LB would enjoy that isn't Samoa Joe though. Uh huh. Awesome Kong. Mm-hmm. Just awesome Konging it up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like Kong, I don't know why I want to see Awesome Kong versus Bailey. Her no. in that NXT no. Divas division would be amazing. No, even better. I want Awesome Kong to be Bailey's friend. Well, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay that'd be good. 
Random, random thought. I don't know why I just thought about this today. I actually ran into somebody today that works on a bullying campaign that is in league with the Be a Star that WWE does. Hmm. So that was kind of an interesting connection that, that I made today at this nonprofit thing. So throwing that out there. Uh, actually, a really cool campaign. I hope I hear more about it. Apparently, uh, it discussed, and you know, being, you know, we're wrestling fans. I don't know how many of you guys did sports in high school. I, I know I experienced this a little bit, but uh, the idea of maybe you were a sports per, you know, a sports kid, but you were benched all the time. And the bullying that goes around with that, and not oh, I got a hand raise from Riz, for instance. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I quit basketball over it, like oh. very vocally at, 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 in ninth grade, and uh, and they're dealing around that and helping these kids get back into sports later on. There's no bench in marching band because I, as as most of you know, like <laughs> like if you don't if you're not mostly if you're not into football from like like early on and just redshirt those first few you're seasons, you're not going to get it. Sword. You're not going to go anywhere. Unless you're some kind of freaking prodigy, um, and uh, and that's kind of hard to swallow for a few years there, mm. you know. So, anyways, uh, kind of a side note. Sorry, little little off off the topic there. But anyways, uh, let's <laughs> awesome Kong in Steph's corner when she faces Rousey at WrestleMania. Mm. Yes. Yep. Cosign. Cosign. Thank you, Matt. Yes. yes. Make that happen. Make it. Make Co-sign. make a sue. So on that note, let's find out what you guys learned from wrestling this week. Who wants to go first? Mike, you look ready. All right. I learned that um, Arrow is going to have a new super villain oh, series in season four. Oh, <laughs> geez. This is so great. And thank you That's for filling. Great. Thank you for filling me in on his campaign, Steve Amell's uh, mm-hmm. campaign to get on Raw. And did you watch the interview with Stardust on WWE.com? I posted the interview on our Facebook page. Sword. That's why I found it. Thank you very much yes. for that. I don't read. I just um, click play. Um, I, I, I learned that Stardust has failed this city and will get an arrow to the chest. He's failed this universe. He has <laughs> failed. Stardust has failed Starling City. And so that great. It. I, really I don't care what they do. I said on the Hangout last night that Stephen Amell should bring in Sting, and we should get Sting versus Stardust. That will never happen in a million bajillion years, but it'd be great. And we did get into that pretty deeply on the uh, Raw wrap-up, if you want more of that. So please check it out, WrestlingMamShow.com. All right. Uh, What about you, a lunchbox? Mm, Come back to me. What about you, Bobby (laughs) F.J. Town? I learned that things can, in fact, happen outside of the WWE's buildings. Storyline wise, uh, Hideo, Hideo Tommy got hit outside of the backstage area for once, mm-hmm. and they haven't done that in a long time. Everything happens backstage in WWE now, so I, I was glad to see that. I always think it's a kind of a laziness that that happens that way. Yeah. I liked how they I liked how they introduced the footage though that someone was yeah, yeah. meeting Enzo and Big Cass outside, and it was like, exactly. oh, I'm videotaping my interaction. Wait, there's a commotion? Something oh, happened. Commotion is. Uh, good mm-hmm. stuff. What about you, Miz? Uh, first of all, I just got a notification that the Raw wrap-up is starting. Uh, I don't know how, but... I'll um, investigate. You're late. <laughs> I started... I, I learned in wrestling that one man can come to one federation, one entity... And almost, rumor has it, destroy another company <laughs> with his bare Samoan hands, which are which is spelled B E A R because that, he has bare back Samoan. bare hands, right to bare arms. Okay. Um, from, from the chat room. That, that, that was Did really. Sword fall asleep? <laughs> yeah, Sword, are you awake? <laughs> I'm, 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 like, I'm figuring out why. I'm trying to figure out why the raw wrap up's happening right now. <laughs> Sword, Sword just passed out. Sorry about yeah, that. Nobody else got that? Bare hands. No, no, man. No, not really, no. So okay. I, I just completely love the entire Lana and Rusev thing. Like the drama around that and, and Ziggler just being like. Pfft. At least I'm getting some in the middle of this. Uh, <laughs> like, I was like, I, I don't care that you're that. using me. Yeah, exactly. I hope he just says that. At least I'm getting some. What, at what point do we start slut shaming Ziggler? Wow. Ever, Sorg. Wow. Ever. 
Never. No, nobody Never puts anything in front of him. That is sexy. I mean, that is he puts it out on Front Street. He's here to show the world. So No, he has it on his shirt, Sorg. Show He's here off. to steal the show and your girlfriend. And yep. Mission Accomplished. LB, what would you learn? Uh, I learned that uh, you can kill, fuck, and eat two police officers, steal their clothing and their weapons <laughs> and their vehicle, and still be a face. And still be what? Mm. Still be a face. Um, <laughs> yep. going, going off of that, maybe Oh, good. Matt learned, Matt learned that uh, the most exciting moments in Dean Ambrose's life are never shown on camera. Nope. <laughs> because you can't. Too hot for TV, right? Um, how'd he get that hot dog cart back in the day? <laughs> I still want to know how he got off the subway with that hot, hot yeah. dog. Uh, Wheels learned that Ambrose is a secret cop. They never explain it. They, they just like flash a badge and says, look, taking over. Like, where are the other cops? And and how they are they? are dead. dead. Sure. Their bones have been picked clean and they are <laughs> dead in the back yeah. of that. Room. How are you even going to you... see him at this pay-per-view after the, how many felonies he just committed on Monday night? Yeah. So I wonder if Dean Ambrose only has a license to use um, yeah. different machinery in the state of New York. Because mm. when he used the hot dart cart, it was in Brooklyn. It's a special and last night was in he, also, he also like r- drove a car that had another wrestler inside of it. Hmm. Mm, that's true. And the yeah. ambulance and I don't know. Uh, from the Facebook uh, group, we had some uh, answers to what they learned from wrestling. Gabriel says he learned Kevin Owens can have uh, four rivalries going on at once and they be successful. Currently, Five. Cena, Baylor, Joe, Zane. I think he could uh, be the next Five. epic hill. Five? Who's the fifth? Uh, it's Tommy. Regal. <laughs> Regal, that's right. Regal. Yeah. Regal is actually pointed out in the very next comment. That's Technically, right. Technically, uh, also I, Alex Riley. I, I think he could no. be the next epic kill in the converse, con, uh, conversation of Triple H and Edge. He's just the guy that pisses everybody off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tony Garza learned, don't forget Regal, Gabriel. He learned that uh, someone will literally die in tomorrow's Lucha Underground. Yeah, I saw the commercials for the death match. I'm like, yeah, death, death match. match. Death well, match. I, I, and I have a feeling Lucha Underground is something that doesn't say something like death match very lightly. <laughs> Sork. Sork. They never say anything very lightly. No, no. Sork. Or without an Somebody accent. Somebody turned to a dragon and left Lucha Underground. Mm-hmm. Eric Young. Wait, no, Eric left. Young. no, it wasn't Eric Young. <laughs> um, I, I just want to know if um, Dario Cueto finally got contractors to fix his window. He's a ghost. Can't. He's a ghost. Mm. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Gabriel uh, uh, is is excited about Lucha. Uh, Kyle in the group says he learned that Matt Hardy wants to make a team with ACH called the Reverse Oreo Express. That's racist. That's really bit, racist. But uh, okay. but it's also very actual. But it's, yeah, actual. yeah. Um, jeez. Anyways, uh, 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 Ed, Ed Burke on uh, Ed Burke thirty seven on on Twitter also responded. He learned that Dean Ambrose can subdue an entire SWAT team, steal their van, and face no consequences. <laughs> hey, Entirely. we keep on saying I I, I say this every, day, every like for the past two days. What what were we thinking when Stone Cold did this? Mm-hmm. We were too young and stupid. I don't know about you. I was like eighteen. Um, yeah, we that thought was excited. that is cool. It was exciting. Yeah. Bobby's only fourteen. We so. didn't overthink the consequences. But what do you think the eighteen? I don't rule... know. If, I don't know if Stone Cold ever beat up police though. He beat up security. No, he did. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think he did he police beat, at he one beat point. Beat up police. Yeah. It's, he brought a gun to Raw. Police. Yeah. He. Oh yeah, fake I gun. forgot about that fake one. Gun. But it was a fake gun. No. It was a lot of activities. Has that stopped anybody any cop before? It yeah. said bang 316. <laughs> it wasn't Riz, like when Riz. Billman had a Topical. Gun Topical. Yeah. Topical. Yeah, no. Topical. Uh. Anyways, oh, I also and... learned that Chris Jericho is horrible password protection. Sorg, what did you learn? Um, <laughs> geez. Uh, I learned that you can blow up an entire WWE storyline by posting a video that you caught backstage on YouTube. The yeah. Seth mm-hmm. Rollins pushing the cameraman shot that we're just like, oh, by the way, we forgot to wrap up this loose end. Here's a YouTube video of what happened. <laughs> Don't know who put it there, but yeah, uh, very interesting. It was, it was GTV. GTV. Tom it is, Green. 
It is kind of the yes, GTV. Tom Green. Guys, yeah. it's been the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you for joining us here, talking yeah, pro wrestling fun. with us. <laughs> Thank you at DJ Lunchbox, at Panel Riot, PanelRiot.com for your comic book uh, can I, can podcasting I, needs. Yes? Can I plug something this week? Sure. Uh, I recently received a very generous gift of uh, DVDs of the entire animated X-Men series. Mm-hmm. And uh, this week will be the first in a long series of uh, watching all these and talking mm-hmm. about them. Mm-hmm. I will be uh, reviewing parts one and two of Night of the Sentinels and episode number three, Enter Magneto. I am going to be right with you on these ones. Are they still on Netflix? Cause, uh, no. no. No, they're not. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I believe they are on YouTube, though, Sorg. I'm, yeah, I'm sure I can find them, but I know the first season of, and maybe first season and a half of the X Men cartoon, like pretty much by heart at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were a lot of reruns back in the day. And, yes, there uh, was. Uh, I saw the episode with uh, Bishop, oh, a million times. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, yeah, it's Bad Chappies on the show. Uh, you're really excited about it. Uh, anyways, uh, awesome. Go check it out panelride.com. Mad Mike, he's here on the Wrestling Mayhem show. Maybe some other shows sometime. Talking about I, I will be back on the midweek for this week. There you go. We'll be back. There you go. Uh, Bobby F. J. Town, he's the host of Boss Battle on InsertCoinToBegin.com. He has nothing I am. He has nothing ready to say. Riz. <laughs> I said that I am. At the E Riz. He's been doing Riz Plays. Oh. Also at Riz Plays. Uh, uh, uh. Say it right, Sorg. What? What? Riz Plays Games. Riz Plays Games. Check it out. RPG. You can't miss it. Also check uh, it out. I- I do have daily posts going up probably daily on my YouTube page, and I will probably post them on intercoinbegin.com. And, well, no, I will post them on intercoinbegin.com. Well, let's say. You so sound, check it out. You sound conflicted. Watch watch me suck at playing video games. Mm. Suck at it. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> no, I'm no, at Sogertron on the Twitter, Sogertron.com, SogertronMedia.com. So many things going on. We recently visited the Coin Op Gaming Hall of Fame and Museum here north of the city in Pittsburgh. Go check out the video of that on InsertCoinToBegin.com. Other videos and talk about social media. Apparently, they're tweeting out my uh, 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 wrestlers uh, Facebook for Wrestlers article from a couple years ago. Lately, Amen is uh, from Sorgatron.com. <laughs> so that's been happening. Uh, so go check that out. If everything else, WrestlingMamShow.com, 412-206-WMS0, or Good that time. email address. Good times. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMamShow.com. <laughs> Subscribe to the Wrestling Mayhem Show on iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and just follow the Facebook page as well. We're posting some of the videos up there as we can in their limitations. And, uh, of course, Basic Sickness. Thanks to him, BasicSickness.com. Mike Allen PR on the Twitters. He's been helping us with the show notes and tweets all night long. And check out the Indie Mayhem Show. And uh, who are we talking about the next couple of weeks? Some Ring of Honor representation. We'll be on the wrestling or the indie mayhem show in the next couple of weeks. What? Stay no. tuned for details on that. Really big things leading into super indie for the International Wrestling Cartel. So thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you our chat room live at wrestlingmayhemshow.com, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.